What's happening? Hello world, this is Johnny DeLuca and welcome to your 11th SQL Server tutorial. Today I want to talk to you about adding constraints to a table. SQL Server 2012 allows you to add several constraints to a table. The goal of most constraints is data integrity. So their purpose is to improve the validity and consistency of your data. And I'll be covering five constraints, and they are the primary key, number one, number two, default, number three, unique, number four, check, and finally, foreign key constraints. So, a little background on each. A primary key is a column that contains a unique list of values. Often an integer column is added to a table with the identity property and is used as the primary key. However, you can create a primary key from almost any column or combination of columns. The main limitations are that the column cannot allow nulls. The values must be unique and you can have only one primary key per table. Since you've already created two tables, or in our last tutorials we have, if you went and did those, you will have already done two, you'll create primary keys on those tables. And if you haven't done so, I encourage you to go back uh, through the last few tutorials and get caught up. Um, so both the employee and addresses tables have ID values that are unique and can be used as primary keys. Okay. Now a little background on default constraints. Default constraints are perfect when you have a column that typically contains a specific value. A good candidate for this is a column that has a data type of bit. The bit data type accepts only one or zero, true or false. If you add an active column to the employee table that specifies whether an employee is currently working for the company, the default value will probably be true or one. Therefore, you should set the default value for that column accordingly. All right, next I want to talk about unique constraints. Unique constraints are sometimes confused with primary keys. These constraints simply ensure that you duplicate values, ex excuse me, ensure that duplicate values cannot be inserted in the corresponding column. For example, assume that you must add a column for social security numbers to the employee table. Since social security numbers are truly unique values, you should add a unique constraint to ensure that a given social security number is entered only once. Okay, you can't have two people walking around with the same social security number. Okay, and then check constraints. Uh, check constraints allow you to check the value that is being inserted against the logical expressions. The constraint is similar to a foreign key column in that it controls what values are inserted. The foreign key column gets its values from another table while check constraints use expressions. Okay, now before I show you in Management Studio how to add constraints, uh, I need you to execute this following code. So go ahead and copy this down. Okay, so we're using my database 2. We're altering the human resources dot employee. We're going to add the active bit, not null, altering the uh, human resources dot employee table. We're adding social security number, and then we're doing the same thing basically for my database too, or excuse me, my first database. So we're doing this on both. Going to hit execute. Commands completed successfully. Okay, now um, we're going to expand our databases folder right here. Now we're going to my first database. We want to expand this guy. We're going to expand the tables folder. Right click the human resources dot employee. Click design. Okay, now we're going up here to employee ID. We're going to right click that. And we're going to click set primary key. Okay, now we're going to want to click on the active right here. Now we are going to go and type a 1 in on default value or binding right here. Now, 
Um, we're going to go up here to the menu bar to where it's manage index and keys. We're going to go ahead and click on the add button in the indexes and key window right here. Hit add. Now we want to find the name property right here and we're going to want to go ahead and type capital U Q underscore employee underscore SSN for social security number. So go ahead. Oops. I want that backslash. Now we want to set the unique value to yes is unique right here. The drop down, yes, got that done. Next we want to go to the type right here. I'm going to select this drop down and we want this to be unique. And then we're going to, once we have that, we're just going to click close. Okay, now we're going back over to the Object Explorer. We want to expand the human resources.employee. And then we are going to go here to uh, Constraints and click right click this right here. New Constraint. Okay, in the Check Constraint dialog box here, we want to change the value for the name property to CK underscore employee underscore gender underscore MF. So we just need to add gender. Oops. MF. Okay. Now we want to go up here to the expression value and click this and we'll see the ellipsis here. And now in here, I want you to type in the following. Gender equals female or male. Click OK. Okay, I'm not sure why I'm getting this error right here, but I'm going to show you how to do this exact same thing using T SQL and it will go through error free. And this is one of the main reasons also that people tend to prefer T SQL over using Management Studio. Not only does it save time, these little errors that keep popping up along the way are always avoided using T-SQL for whatever reason. So anyways, now all you would do after that is uh, go ahead and click close and then you would save. So now I'm going to show you how to do the same thing using T-SQL. Okay, I know what was wrong here. The wrong uh, constraint was selected over here. I just deleted that other one that was there by default. And as you can see, it has now accepted this. Okay, so anyways, moving along, I'll show you. What I want to show you actually now is how to add a computed column using T SQL. So we're going to close this. Uh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. That's what I was talking about before. It's falling back onto the CK employee instead of the CK employee gender. Anyways, that's irrelevant. There we go. Okay, now go up to your query editor and then copy down this code and run it. We're using my database too. We're altering the table human resources dot employee. We're going to add the constraint the primary key human resources employee underscore employee ID primary key employee ID. We're going to alter the human resources dot address. We're going to add a constraint the primary key human resources address underscore address ID. And as you can see, this is all pretty self-explanatory here. We're going to hit execute. And commands completed successfully. So pretty cool. And I know some of you probably think pretty self-explanatory. I have no idea what a lot of that means. And again, I'll be covering that in later tutorials um, when we start getting into T SQL a little more adept. But so for now, I have show, uh, taught you about 
different key constraints, you learned about check constraints, unique constraints, default constraints, primary key constraints. I then uh, ran you through it using Management Studio and then I showed you how to uh, add a computed column using T-SQL. Um, I have one more foreign key constraint, so why, why don't we just go ahead and cover foreign key constraints now. I don't want to make these tutorial, tutorials too terribly long, but since we're on the topic anyway. Okay, so a little background on foreign key constraints. The integrity of data is the most important concern, obviously, in a database. If you allow the insertion of bad data, then that is what's going to come out. Foreign keys play a vital role in enforcing a referential integrity of the database. And we'll probably cover referential integrity in a few tutorials, maybe. haven't really decided, but it's a real crucial database concept. So anyways, you may have noticed that the employee ID column in the address table, um, to ensure that only employee IDs that exist in the employee table are inserted into the address table, you need to create a foreign key constraint. So that's what we're going to do now. So um, we're going to go ahead and run another. Whoop, no, that's not what we want. We already did that. Exit out of here. No. We don't need you. Uh, new query. Okay, as in the last tutorial, prior to running through the exercise in Management Studio, I want you to go ahead and copy down and run this script. This is a different script, but just like we started off last time, we're using my first database, we're altering the table, human resources dot address, we're adding the constraint, primary key, human resources address, underscore address ID on the primary key we're setting it. Address ID, and execute, commands completed successfully. Okay, now, we want to make sure our databases folder is expanded, we want to make sure uh, my first database is expanded, and then we want to expand the tables folder, which is already done. And then we're going to expand the human resources dot address table, which is not. We can close this for now. Um, then we're going to right click the keys folder here. Select new foreign key is what we're going to do. And now in a similar fashion to what we did before, we want to locate this name property here. And we're going to change this. We're going to modify it. We're going to modify it to F key stands for foreign key employee underscore two underscore address underscore on underscore employee ID. So all right, we're good to go there. Now we're going to click the uh property right here. <clears throat> Sorry. We're going to click right here and we want human resources from the drop down. Yes. Employee human resources is what we want. All right. Okay, now we want here employee ID from this guy right here. And from there, okay, from here, close it out. And then we would just save it. And if a warning window appears when you go to save it, just click yes. So, all right. Now we can do the same thing, create foreign key constraint using T-SQL. So I just tried to save that and I received a different error and I'm pretty sure it's because I made a typo. So I want to direct your attention back in case you typoed it as well and you probably did because I told you to. New foreign key. Uh, well that needs to be deleted. That just got created. We don't need that. But yes, and this is not correct right here. The correct syntax is FK underscore employee
underscore to underscore address on employee ID. Alright, so if you had that long, go ahead and go back to the human resources address. Uh, right click keys, new foreign key, then you will have another foreign key, you can delete the new one, but you want to go find the one that we had set before, address, address, incorrect syntax anyways, and change that. Alright. Okay, now using T-Seq, we'll go over here to the new query editor. We're going to go ahead and copy this down, and we're going to accomplish the same thing. And commands completed successfully. Um, it's something to note the foreign key constraint must be created on the table where the key column is not the primary key. So that's a big one. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for stopping by my YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Oh, yeah, and I encourage you guys to copy these scripts down and keep them in a scripts folder for later use down the road. You can modify them. They're really handy. Anyway, see you in the next tutorial.